This video has been produced to provide information to science teachers about 21st century literacies. It will explore how 21st century literacies affect our students in their social worlds and provide a framework for incorporating 21st century literacies into teaching and learning practices within the science domain. Multimodal literacy is a set of abilities and skills where oral, visual and digital literacy overlap. These include the ability to understand the power of images and sounds, to recognise and use that power, to manipulate and transform digital media, to distribute them pervasively, and to easily adapt them to new forms. Students today communicate with each other and engage with text and content in ways far different from what they were 30, 20, or even 10 years ago. 80% of teenagers now have a smartphone, 82% have been online within the last four weeks, and the vast majority of teenagers today access the internet daily and consider internet access to be essential to their lives. The rising use and availability of digital technologies has created a platform where students can be both consumers and creators of content, enabling exchanges and collaborations of knowledge not previously possible. Information is more available than ever before, and technologies such as blogs, wikis, emails, social media, digital publishing software, smartphones and video conferencing allow for a complex layering of communication features, including oral and written text, still and moving images, sound, video and music to produce multimodal texts. In most classrooms, our definition of literacy and text are page bound and static, but these definitions and the pedagogies associated with them are becoming increasingly divorced from real world social contexts and the lived realities of our students. Globalisation, increased diversity, and the rapid and continuing evolution of technology makes it impossible for us as teachers to know for certain what the future world we are moulding our students to be citizens of will look like. How do we as teachers prepare students to be active participants in a future world which is radically unknowable? Barnett argues that to prosper in the contemporary world, neither skills nor knowledge are sufficient, but the that success will be found in those who have the capacity to find a way forward in spite of great uncertainty by using creativity and re reflexivity to solve problems in situ. That is, to teach for an unknown future is about teaching a pedagogy and curriculum understood in terms of human qualities and dispositions. This viewpoint is echoed by Cope and Colansis. The kind of person who can live well in this world is someone who has acquired the capacity to navigate from one domain of social activity to another, who is resilient in their capacity to articulate and enact their own identities, and who can find ways of entering into dialogue with and learning new and unfamiliar social languages. As teachers in general, our goal is to cultivate the skills, dispositions and qualities in students which will maximise their chances of personal fulfilment civic participation and access to meaningful work. As teachers of science, our goal is to cultivate the skills, dispositions and qualities which will allow students to make meaningful contributions to science in a way which benefits society. If we want our students to be able to effectively communicate their ideas with the public, it is essential that they be practiced and adept at multimodal communication. Effective multimodal multimodal writing calls for the author to have an understanding of their target audience's knowledge, attitudes and values with respect for their interpersonal and social context and for communication to be via their preferred media. Effective science communication needs to move beyond a transition, transmission model towards a participatory model which encourages dialogue and an open exchange of ideas. Wynne argues that conscious action towards creating, structuring and sponsoring new forms of participatory media, such as blogs, online video, podcasts and social media, may help communicators to gain greater influence in, influence in engaging the public in science. Nisbet and Shufel argue that students of science, whether they be primary, secondary or tertiary, should be exposed to a variety of quality multi multimodal science resources educated in how to constructively use participatory tools and taught how to critically analyse scientific media and resources. Cultivating multimodal communication skills in our students is essential if we are to say we are fulfilling our goals as teachers. We need to teach our students to constructively use and produce multimodal resources. But how do we do this? Colansis and Cope have proposed the Learning by Design framework, which is designed to support a multimodal curriculum. 
the framework consists of four elements, experiencing, conceptualizing, analyzing, and applying. There are two distinct ways of experiencing, experiencing the known and experiencing the new. In experiencing the known, students reflect on their own life world experiences to build on their prior knowledge, interests, and cultural background. In experiencing the new, students are immersed in an unfamiliar experience, whether that be places and situations, or text, images, audio, etc., which is outside of the educational setting. Scaffolding from peers, teachers, or digital help guides, for example, allows students to make sense of the unfamiliar and reconcile this new learning with their existing life world experiences. Conceptualising is a process which moves away from life world experiences and instead looks at underlying structures, causes and relationships. Conceptualising by naming involves students naming and developing abstract generalising terms. By the process of conceptualising by theory, students use these concept names and generalisations to make connections between dissimilar concepts and reveal underlying realities which may not immediately be obvious. Analyzing involves examining and interpreting the underlying rationale for a piece of knowledge, an action, object, or represented meaning. When students analyze functionally, they look for the purpose of the material they are examining. Why was it created? What does it do? What does it cause or affect? What is the context of the material and what com concepts does it make connections to? Analyzing critically requires that students investigate the biases, intentions, and interests of the author. Does the material lean towards a certain viewpoint? Who benefits or is affected by the material? And whose interest does it serve? Applying is a process whereby students take their newfound knowledge and understanding out of the educational setting and use it to make an impact in the real world. Knowledge can either be acted upon or realised appropriately or creatively. When knowledge is applied appropriately, is it, a, it is applied in a way which is typical and conforms to generic conventions. This doesn't mean that knowledge is simply regurgitated. There is always some kind of transformation or reinventing which takes place. Applying creatively, however, involves students acting upon knowledge in a context or setting quite different from where it originated. It could mean taking an idea and adapting it to work in a different way. This process can often result in novel and original interventions. This pedagogical framework is best suited to a learning environment where students are engaged in rich tasks. Rich tasks are defined as learning experiences which are purposeful and engaging, model how people solve real world problems in work or community, put knowledge to work, demonstrate what students know and can do, support multiple representations and solution strategies, offer opportunities for meaningful learning and higher order cognitive thinking, and result in some product, presentation or outcome as a result of the deliberations of the group or the individual. By creating a learning environment that engages students in rich tasks, which are supported by the Learning by Design framework and aligned to the appropriate curriculum, we as teachers can be assured that we are teaching in a way which meets our professional requirements as teachers. We hope you have found this video useful and informative and would encourage everyone to consider implementing some of the strategies in their own classrooms. Thank you.